James Holder, iPhone TV, in association with MTK. Go over with me, I've got trainer Tony Sims. We're here in Scotland, ahead of Ricky Burns. Big, big night as he aims to unify the division first. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, John. Good, good. Talk to me about Ricky Burns, the camp. How, how has he been? How has he been in, in comparison to last camp? He's been great. We've uh, we started sooner in this camp, so we've had a longer camp. First week in January we started. Um, we know the magnitude of this fight. He, he's attempting to uh, make more history as a Scottish fighter to obviously be the first Scottish fighter to unify world titles. And uh, it's all about making history for him, but also about winning the fight and then going on to you know these big fights in America that Ricky's craved for his whole career. And obviously, uh, financially making himself secure. So this fight's the biggest fight of his whole career on Saturday night. Is it a worry for you guys that you haven't been able to find the most footage on Julius and Zongo compared to other fighters that Ricky's faced in the past? Um, a little bit. We had this problem in the last fight when he boxed Creel Relic, the same sort of problem. Uh, he, uh, there wasn't hardly any footage of him. So with these fighters that fight on small bills like Ndongo's done throughout his career, small bills in, in Namibia. Uh, it's very, very difficult to find material. There's like one or two rounds of when he's actually knocking people out. So you can't really see a lot from that. Uh, obviously, his world title shot, he won it in 40 seconds, so you can't take anything from that. But what we've prepared for, we've prepared uh, for a great, fast, hard punching fighter, we've prepared for like a Terence Crawford and uh, because we know the importance of this fight and what it can lead to. Ricky Burns is the most successful boxer in Scottish history. When you look at some of the great fighters they've had, the likes of Ken Buchanan, even Benny Lynch going way, way back and mm -hmm. Jim Watt. How yeah. proud are you of, of the man and the job that Ricky's done since he's been really good? Oh, you know, uh, I'm really proud of him, not just as, a, as, a, as his coach, but as a friend of his, uh, with Ricky, we're a little bit similar in personalities, as though uh, he he don't get uh, he don't go over the top of what whatever he achieves. He don't walk around and think, you know, he's the uh, he's the king of boxing in Scotland. He's just the everyday next door neighbour, Mr. Nice Guy, Ricky. And uh, for him, it's all about now. For him, and this is what I talk to him about. It's all about him uh, financially securing his future. And, uh, you know, for him to win this fight Saturday, that's, that's what he's going to attempt to do, you know. And for me to see that in financially secure his future is what will make me more elated than anything, really. How high would this win rank uh, in, in terms of Ricky's wins in his career thus far? Well, unifying the titles, you know, is a, a massive achievement. Like, obviously, He's won the world title at three different weights, so um, that was obviously a massive thing for him. Uh, but you know, all these fights now, as you say, he's 34. Uh, you know, how much more longer can he go on for? Maybe another year or two, depending on the victories. But you know, every fight now is a career-defining fight for him, so it's so important for him to come out victorious Saturday night. I know you guys won't be thinking about anything other than Julius and Dongo, but we heard that Eddie was talking about potentially Anthony Connor coming up to face Ricky in the future as well. Are them fights interest you in the team? Or is it a case um, of after this you'd like to see him go to America? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Ricky's uh, always dreamt about boxing in America. Uh, there's some big name fighters out there, Adrian Broner. Uh, obviously, Terence Crawford's got the other two belts. Like we don't want to think about them at the moment. All we've got to think about is winning this fight on uh, Saturday night. He's a difficult opponent in the fact that he's very tall and he's awkward and he's fast. So it's going to be a difficult night's work for Ricky. It's not going to be easy, this fight. And, um, you know, he needs to win this fight before we talk about anyone else. But if you're talking about, well, obviously, what his dreams are, his dreams are obviously going to the States and, uh, you know, defending them titles in the States in, on a big card over there in Vegas where he loves to go on holiday every time he goes on holiday. 
I know he's been caught in the States once against Peter Rowe, and that was at the Farm Arena, so no doubt he'll be aiming next time to get at Las Vegas and some of these yeah. big, big, big nights. I mean, that was... That was more like Mexico than uh, in the States. I think there was like six fat. We were actually two miles away from the border of Mexico on that fight. And uh, they were telling us in the hotel it was one of the most dangerous places to be uh, where we was. And when we walked in the arena, there was like 6,000 uh, Mexicans packed in there at night, fanatical. Uh, so it wasn't like fighting in the States, that fight. but. His old dream is to fight in Vegas. That's what his dream is. And uh, if he's got if he's got the belts, he's unified the belts. You know that lure of the big fights over there. They're, they're definitely going to be on the phone asking him to uh, to fight there, and that, that that'll be a massive lure for him. The qualifier would be a good fight if Anthony come up away. But obviously, uh, Ricky would be looking at going to the States first if he come victorious on Saturday. And what stands in his way is a very tall, good southpaw from Libya. So best of luck to Ricky Burns on Saturday. Thank you very much, Tony, for giving us a Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you.